Okay, should you buy or lease your business vehicle? I'm excited to dig in and talk about it because if you are self-employed or have a small business, then you can take advantage of what is known as the vehicle tax deduction, which essentially allows you to write off your car, your SUV, your truck, or whatever else you may drive for business purposes. Now, I currently have a 2020 Tesla Model 3 that I write off for business purposes as well, and I'll reveal how I decided whether or not to lease or buy my own vehicle, as well as the tax methods that I use. But overall, in this video, what I wanna do is give you a solid guide so that you can run the numbers and compare for yourself if you should buy versus lease a car for business. I'll go over how to qualify for the vehicle tax deductions, the two methods to deduct a vehicle, and the most important factors to consider along with some math and calculations along the way. So if you are as excited as me to dive in, then please do me a huge favor and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm so more people like you can find this video. Stay tuned. Hey there, and if you're new, welcome to our channel. I'm Sean with Life Accounting, the accounting company that helps you save on taxes and build more wealth. And as always, what I'm gonna do is put the timestamps for this video down in the description below so that you can skip to the parts that you want to learn the most about. But I do think this video will give you a ton of value if you watch it from start to finish. Okay, let's go ahead and set the scene and quickly talk about number one, the difference between buying versus leasing a vehicle. Now, while buying a car or leasing a car can be a mathematical numbers and sense decision, there is still a personal preference component to it as well. So let's do a side by side comparison. In the first category, we have ownership because of course, when you buy a vehicle, it is yours forever, right? Like you don't have to give it back and you may also feel a sense of pride knowing you have ownership or you may even experience more financial security because even though vehicles are fast depreciating assets, guess what? They are still assets which you can later sell for some value. On the other side, when you lease a vehicle, you must return it or renew your lease if you want to keep the car so you don't have an asset that you can later sell. However, with leasing, you're not stuck with the same old car year after year after year and you can benefit from driving something new more often. In the next category, we have control, which is closely related to ownership because when you own your vehicle, then you basically can do what you want to do with it, right? Like you can sell it anytime you want to, you can trade it in anytime you want to. Whereas with lease agreements, you may face an early termination penalty if you decide you don't wanna use the car anymore. Also, leasing companies force you to pay for repairs beyond any normal wear and tear. Whereas if you own a car, then maybe you wanna care about having a few scratches on the side or on the windshield. Along with control, you have customization, which means that you can modify the vehicle, right? Like if you own it or buy it, then you can change the color, you can add a logo, you can do whatever you want. Whereas with lease agreements, you can't really make any modifications to the vehicle. And if you do, then you better reverse them before returning your vehicle because that's typically not allowed within leases. The next big difference to consider are payments. And I'm not gonna get too deep into the math yet, but I do wanna call out this as a another personal preference because when you buy a car, you can reach a point where you get rid of all your monthly payments, usually after 60 to 72 months. And you may have a personal value associated with minimizing risk and paying off debt and having low monthly expenses, which is also something to consider. Of course, on the other hand, when you are leasing a car, then you will always live with a car payment for as long as you decide to lease. But Here's the thing, okay? Generally, when you are leasing a car, you have less maintenance as well, which saves you time and money from having to make all these types of repairs to an older car. Okay, so after going through all of this side by side, it's easy, super easy to see why most Americans prefer to own their vehicles instead of lease them because you have ownership, you have control, and you could have less expenses long term. Now, I want you to tell me in the comment section below if you think it is smarter to lease or buy a car after you finish this video. I'm super curious. 
because the truth is it can make more financial sense and bring more value to you by leasing a car for tax purposes. So let's go ahead and talk about number two, how to qualify for the vehicle tax deduction. Okay, I mentioned this in the intro, but if it's not clear, let me go ahead and make it crystal clear. If you want to write off a car, then number one, you must first be self-employed or own a business. Hey Sean, look, I can write off a car in my YouTube videos. Okay, because look, you must use the Schedule C form if you are the sole owner of a company or file a business tax return like the 1065 or 1120 to even find the vehicle tax deduction area. Okay, and it's not enough to just have a business and write off a car because number two, your vehicle must be used for business purposes. For example, you can't just take a car and write it off 100% and then take personal trips to the grocery store or to the gym, right? Like that is not a business purpose of course, unless that is your business. And that's important because there are many court cases that rule against taxpayers when they lack intentional business purposes. Then the third test you need to make sure you can pass is that the vehicle has an ordinary and necessary use for your business. Okay, ordinary typically means that it is a type of expense or vehicle that is commonly seen in your industry or in your specific line of work. And necessary means that it is the type of expense or vehicle that is necessary, almost required, in order for your business to operate. For example, if you own something like a pizza restaurant, then you may want to do something like buy cars for your delivery drivers. But it may be a little sketch if your drivers are pulling up in Teslas and Porsches to deliver pizza, right? Like that's not ordinary for most restaurants. So once you check all of those boxes, okay, you have a business, you have a business use and it is ordinary and necessary, then it's safe to say that you can qualify for the vehicle tax deduction. Now let's talk about number three, the two methods to write off a vehicle. Now it's important to talk about the two methods to write off a vehicle because this is where some of the nuances come into play when you are trying to decide whether or not you should lease or buy a business vehicle. Now the first method to use is called the standard mileage rate. Now this is one of the easiest methods of the two and it generally applies to people who currently own a car and we'll talk about why shortly but first let me explain what it is. So the standard mileage method simply takes a standard mileage rate that the IRS issues every year which for 2022 is 58.5 cents per mile and you use this rate to arrive at your tax deduction. For example, if you drive 10,000 miles for business, then you could deduct $5,850 from your income, which is 10,000 times 58.5 cents per mile. The second method to write off a car is called the actual expense method. Now, this can be used for any vehicle, whether you currently own it, buy it, or lease it. Because with the actual expense method, you can itemize all your vehicle expenses, such as writing off your title, license, and registration fees, your auto insurance policies, your oil and gas, or your electricity if you have an EV car, your repairs and maintenance, your car washes, and a big one, you can write off depreciation, lease payments, or your auto loan interest payments. Now, the last one is really important to note because you can write off auto loan interest not auto loan payments, okay? Big difference there. Now, here's how the numbers work on the actual expense method. First of all, you can only write off the percentage that is being used for business. So let's say for example, you have a vehicle and 50% is being used for business and the other 50% is being used for personal use and you had $10,000 in vehicle expenses. Well, in this case, you would take your total expenses multiplied by 50% to get a $5,000 tax deduction. Okay, now that you understand those two methods, let's go ahead and get into some factors that may help your decision. But look, at the end of the day, the question of should you buy or lease a business vehicle is entirely based on individual circumstances. But some of the factors that I'm gonna cover should help you out or at least understand and guide you in making your own decision, starting with number one, cash flow. Look, starting and running a business can be very difficult and require a lot of capital. And buying a vehicle may require a significant down payment of 10 or 20%. So if you are in the startup or growth phase of your business where you are making other critical business investments, then you may want to consider leasing a vehicle to maintain positive cash flow because that would allow you to have 
lower monthly payments compared to cars of similar quality that you would need to buy. In fact, maintenance is often included with your lease and you can still write off lease payments and mileage as well. And the math on that is pretty simple, right? So for example, if you buy a $40,000 vehicle, then you could have a 10% down payment of $4,000 and a monthly payment of $670 a month. Whereas if you leased a vehicle, you wouldn't have any down payment at all. So you save $4,000 and you could have a lower payment of $541 per month. In over 60 months, you would actually pay 16,000 less for owning or having that vehicle. Now, of course, this is a short-term benefit purely for maintaining healthy cash flow. Let's go ahead and look at the next factor, number two, taxes and depreciation. So regardless of if you lease or buy your vehicle, the good news is you can still qualify for the vehicle tax deduction. The question you need to ask yourself is, how big of a deduction are you going to get? And a big factor in that is taking depreciation. And look, I love depreciation because it's one of the few tax deductions where you can report a loss on paper even if you had a positive return. And you can take depreciation on most business assets, including a business vehicle, but here's the thing, okay? It must be a business asset. In other words, you must own the vehicle. Now, there are also two main ways to take depreciation. You can do the straight line depreciation method where you take a little bit of depreciation every year, usually up to five years, so you get a small but very consistent tax deduction, or you can use bonus depreciation or section 179 depreciation where you take the majority of your depreciation in year one. In this way, you get a bigger tax deduction in one year, but then much lower depreciation in subsequent years. For example, let's say you forecast $100,000 in business profits, so you decide to get a $40,000 vehicle used 100% for business, and you anticipate you may drive 20,000 miles throughout the tax year, where here are four potential tax outcomes. Under the standard mileage rate, you would have an additional $11,700 tax deduction, which is 20,000 miles times 58.5 cents per mile. If you leased a vehicle, then under the actual expense method, we'd have to itemize the estimated cost. So let's say that you have something like $3,500 on gas expenses, because gas is very pricey right now, $2,000 on repairs and maintenance, $3,000 on auto loan insurance, and $6,500 in total annual lease payments for a total tax deduction of $15,000. And if you own a vehicle, then under the same actual expense method, you have the same cost, except now you could use the straight line depreciation method, and that will get you an estimated $7,800 depreciation deduction. But also, you'd have to take away the lease payments, which makes for a total tax deduction of $16,300. But heck, you could take depreciation further and potentially use bonus depreciation or section 179 depreciation to write off the total expense of the vehicle in year one, especially if it is over 6,000 pounds, to get a total tax deduction of $48,500. Now, I do wanna reiterate that all of these numbers are hypothetical and obviously will change based on the vehicle that you buy, your own interest rate, your lease payments, and many other variables. However, I hope this conveys the point that there are different tax outcomes based on if you decide to lease or buy your vehicle, and there are different tax methods to choose from. And of course, I am oversimplifying here because the rules around depreciation are much more complicated, but you can watch my video on how to write off your dream car to get a better understanding, which I'll link at the end of this video. Or you can tell me in the comment section below if you wanna see me make a video all about depreciation. So the big factor to consider here is how big of a tax deduction you want because obviously you don't want a huge tax deduction if you have very little business profits or very little taxable income. And it may not be necessary for you to do so anyway. Just like it can make sense to lease a vehicle in the short term, it can also make sense to own a vehicle in the long term because Owning a vehicle allows you to bring your vehicle expenses down to zero, which can be very healthy for your long-term business growth. 
Also, remember, buying or leasing a car is a personal decision. Maybe this is a vehicle you want to use for other personal purposes or transfer it to another business or even pass it down to someone else. All of this should help you get more clarity on whether or not you want to lease or own your vehicle. Now, here was my thought process when I bought the 2020 Tesla Model 3. So I already had a healthy cash flow, so I didn't anticipate needing cash for other business investments or operation costs. So long term, it made more sense for me to own than lease financially, plus I'm not really a big car guy. So that completely ruled out leasing for me. At the same time, I already had a number of different tax strategies and tax deductions working for me, so I also didn't need a huge tax deduction either, so taking bonus depreciation wasn't necessary. So the fact that the Tesla Model 3 wasn't over 6,000 pounds didn't bother me, so that just basically left me between using the actual expense method or taking the standard mileage deduction rate. And I prefer the actual expense method because I don't drive a lot in general and it would give me a bigger tax deduction. Okay, now, since you made it this far, I have one bonus tip for you, which is how you can deduct business trips from your home. So on one of my last videos about how to write off your dream car, someone in the comment section was pointing out the fact that you can't write off your commutes from your home. And there's a Q&A on H&R Block's website that pretty much says you also cannot deduct commutes. So I wanted to make sure I address that for anyone else who may be wondering the same thing or just thinking along the same lines. Okay, so here's the deal. According to the IRS website, you can in fact deduct commutes from your primary or your dedicated office space to other temporary work locations. So if you want to write off business mileage or business use to and from your home, then you would also want to make sure your home is your dedicated office space and your primary work location. That way when you drive to other business locations, it can be considered a commute back and forth to your office instead of your personal residence. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that bonus and hey, don't forget to tell me in the comment section below if you would buy or lease your vehicle. Coming up next, I have two more videos that you may enjoy as well, so make sure you check those out if you haven't already, and I'll see you over there.